All right, guys, I thought I would give you a review in progress for Ghost Recon Breakpoint. As I've mentioned in a couple other videos I've done for my channel, I did not pick up the Collector Edition, the Ultimate Edition, the Gold Edition. I got the boring old regular Standard Edition. I bought it digitally from the PlayStation Network. First time I've actually ever downloaded a full price game, which... Uh, only because it wasn't really discounted anywhere else and I didn't want to have to deal with uh, getting it home and putting the disc in and patching it. I just wanted to play it and I've been having a blast with it. So expect some Let's Plays from me later on in the next few days. But tonight is just my time with the game to kind of work through some of the systems and figure out the controls and the flow of the game. So as I'm playing with you guys, I can better be more of a director instead of a, oh, that's cool, what does this do? And then watching me navigate and fumble through menus for half an hour to equip new gear or to do something with my character. So those will be coming later on, but I wanna address a couple things first. Um, I've seen a lot of criticism about this game. I actually did a video on this talking about the microtransaction system and I've now gotten to spend some time in the world running around, checking it out for myself and I maintain people are really overreacting to this microtransaction system. So you are going to get a insane amount of skull credits by exploration, just by walking around the world, opening chests, killing enemies, that sort of thing. You're gonna get a lot. Um, I'm currently sitting at 7,000 skull credits. I've been playing for about three and a half hours. Most things you need to spend them on early on are early scopes and attachments that run you anywhere from 25 to 3,000 and some vanity items if you're interested in. I bought uh, my notorious boonie hat, which you know I have to have um, because that's like my look in these games. I love that. And I also bought a cosmetic tattoo for my dude because my dude's always tatted because, you know, why not? Um, and that's what I've spent my money on so far, and I'm not having an issue with it. Clearly, I'm back up to 7,000. So you can spend money if you want to. You do not have to. As a matter of fact, across the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tabs across the top of the pause menu, only one is dedicated to the store, and you can blow right over it. You don't even have to worry about it. Um, just like with all the other Ubisoft games, you have the option of picking any gear you want for statistics, and then you have what they call a skin override where you can customize based on any piece of gear you've gotten to make your character look exactly as you want, even if you want the benefits of another piece of gear, which isn't unique by any stretch of the imagination, but I've spent quite a bit of time to make my guy look a really cool way, to me at least. So now any piece of gear I get does not change it. It's just a number at this point. It has nothing to do with how I look. And I love that it's locked and I don't have to deal with it anymore. So I wanna say that the store and the microtransaction system, wildly blown out of proportion, must've been a slow news day for a lot of people. It is not nearly as bad as it appears to be. The second thing I wanted to talk about is something that I haven't really seen a lot of other reviews talking about, and that is the guided mode versus the exploration mode. Now, a lot of people have commented that they feel Ghost Recon is a very simple game, and I can tell you in the time I've been playing, I've already died three times. One of them was when a drone flew overhead, and I wasn't able to get in the cover fast enough, and I was immediately eviscerated by enemies. One of them was stumbling on a pack of wolves, <laughs> And one of them was just being stupid and uh, throwing a grenade into a wall instead of jumping over the wall and murdering myself. And this game goes south very rapidly. And I love that because these games really supposed to, you know, be talking about stealth and you are behind enemy lines and you are a weak character. And it shows um, you take damage a lot quicker. When you take damage, you start slowing down. You have a hard time keeping up your stamina meter. You're breathing heavy. Your iron sights start to shake. You definitely go through the break point, which is awesome. That's the namesake of this game. So unlike other Ghost Recon games, particularly Wildlands, where you can just kind of face tank enemies 
and just kind of trade shots with them, knowing that you may get the upper hand. In this game, particularly, if you start to get hurt, you are going to be in a bad time. So it's really about tactical cover. It's really about stealth. It's really about picking your engagements in a timely and meaningful manner, which is awesome. But I don't see a lot of people talking about that. It's really, really frustrating. So I mention that because there are those two uh, modes I was talking about, the guided mode and the exploration mode. Now, uh, I will show off some of these systems in greater detail when we start getting into our Let's Plays, but the point is with the guided mode, it will put a quest marker on your map. Someone will say, hey, you go get me thing, go kill thing, go do thing. And it'll put a big old dot boop, on your map. You walk up to the dot, magic happens. The alternative mode is called exploration mode, which I've been actually playing around with quite a bit and I do like an awful lot. Exploration mode, instead of telling you where things are, they will give you clues. They will say, you know, it was west of this town near a waterfall by a red box. And you have to go find that. And that is how you unlock the mission uh, or the objection, you know, not the objection, the location of the mission or the thing you have to do, which is really, really fun. You can toggle between the two instantly. There's no penalty for jumping between the two. It's just another fun way to immerse yourself, especially since you can, with a press of a button, disable the map and the HUD and just have basically your guy running around. Really gives you that sense of you don't know what's around the corner because there's no more of these big red blobs like, hey, an enemy is coming. You're just kind of on your own. So I really think people have missed the boat with this game and I have seen the Metacritic scores right now sitting at a mid 50, which blows my mind. Um, I am by no means an Ubisoft shill. I definitely have had my fair share of frustrations with Ubisoft, but in terms of experience gating that I have seen so far, in terms of how the weapon gear, uh, the gear score works, in terms of gating content behind the paywall, not the case for me. Now, as I play more, maybe end game things will change, but in early on stages, I am getting plenty of gear and stat points and skill points to go around and explore. The game runs gorgeously on my PlayStation 4 Pro without hiccup. You have those two game modes that I mentioned if you wanna play more um, exploration base versus guided base. You have the whole skin system where you can pick the look and feel of your character. And you have the combat which does punish you for taking shots and will put you at a definite disadvantage in firefight. So with that, I want to close out my early impressions, but I want to say this game is awesome. Definitely, definitely for me, and uh, one of those game of the year candidates, obviously I've only played a small amount, so I'm not anywhere near uh, determining that quite yet, but it's definitely got a lot to do. Lots of side quests and missions and places to explore and it's wrapped up in that Tom Clancy universe, which we know and we love. With that, I'd like to close out this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know for people who have bought the game or who have dedicated a specific, uh, you know, a pretty good amount of time to the open betas. They had a few. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on this. Um, I really am trying to understand why everybody jumped on this game so hard in such a negative way for the microtransaction system, which agreed is crazy. There are pages and pages and within that store tab, there's pages and pages of things you can buy. I showed off that in my previous video, but it does not in any way impact the game and everything that's in there, I'm starting to pick up. Those things are starting to vanish because I'm finding them in game and I'm buying them with the abundance of scale credit. So leave a comment below. I want to hear from you guys. Uh, bring the hate, bring the love, whatever. Just bring it. With that, I'm closing out this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care of yourselves, ghosts. And until next time, I will see you guys on the other side.